Chapter 4 Wedding March Here comes the bride that go down the underground hall. The Fumalina did not hear the wedding march or the rustle of her stiff white gown gown as its satin train dragged along the dirty tunnel. Nor did she not see the excited guests gathered around her wedding or the eager look on Mr. Mall's face. If it was all a dream, Fumalina began to slide the ring ring Cornelius had given her from her finger, went into the shiny blue gym. She could see his hands face during the jaw, cold and asleep, never the lake. She hardly noticed that the reverend rat began to recite the cemetery. Mr. Mole, do you take this woman to be your waffly wedded wife? He asked. Mr. Mole answered grandly, I do. And Famalina, do you take this mole to be your waffly wedded husband? Felina only heard Cornelius' voice saying the words he'd spoken the night they met. I'll never forget you. Never ever, echoed Felina. Speak up, the Reverend rat twerped impatiently. Felina slid her prince's ring back on her finger. Never, she said out loud. I beg your pardon, sputtered the revenue rat. I can't marry Mr. Mole. I don't even love him, Thumbelina explained. A tremor spread across the room at like the guest gaps in horror. Mr. Mole stared his brain at Miss Female strode, Thumbelina. Then, to the crowd's further surprise, grunted the toad, leaped through the ceiling. I marry her, he shouted. Napoleon coolly pushed the toad aside. No, I won't marry you. I'm going home, she declared as she marched towards the tunnel. After, after her, commanded Mr. Mole. Berkeley Beetle grabbed her bill. Hiya, toots, he giggled. I'm not your toots, Felina said indignantly, unclipping her bill. The beetle tumbled backwards, and Felina began to run. Behind her followed Mr. Mole, then Grunnel, and then Berkeley Beetle, who was screaming, Wait! Hey! My wings! At the same time, the jitter babies were leading Prince Cornelius for the Mole's tunnel. Though now, really followed by the friendly bugs, the prince was determined to find his trail lob. Peering over the steep cliff, Cornelius spotted Mr. Mole and his guests chasing Thumbelina across the narrow edge. She marry me! Grunnel was yelling, his wed feet flapping as fast as they could after them. The prince flew down Grunnel's path. The stars choked could barely speak. <laughs> the fairy prince? No! Berkeley. Grunnel grabbed Berkeley Beetle and thumped him. I thought you killed the prince, you idiot! Cornelius slashed at the toe of his silver toe. Take that! Come on, show me what you're made out of, Toad. Grunnel seized the flaming torch and swung it wildly. Furiously, Cornelius caught the Toad by his ankle. There, have enough, Cornelius demanded. Then he heard Fumalina cry out in the gloom. The, and as the prince turned towards the sound, Soon, the beetle tripped him, and Grunnel seized his sword. The fight was not over yet. As for Tiny Fumalina, she was still fighting her way through the dim tunnel. She was too frantic to even notice when she reached Mr. Mole's chamber. In fact, Fumalina had almost lost hope when suddenly glimpsed a shaft of sunlight reflected on a pile of gold. Looking up, she realized the sunlight came from a small hole in the ceiling. Using all her strength, Fumalina climbed up the steep tre treasure mound towards the welcoming light. Then with one final heave, she was free.